seriously. What could go wrong? But then I went to check the oil and I found milkshake. Welcome back to the channel. In my last wood chipping video I mentioned that the chipper had jammed twice. You only saw one. That's because it jammed at the end of the day and the knives are dull. I figured bring it up here to the garage, we'll unjam it, we'll sharpen the knives, fix the holes in the lid. Oh, and there's going to be car noise because we're only a few feet from the, the road. So I was just going to start it up to see if it was still working. I did pull it to see if it would turn over and it will. But then I went to check the oil. And I found milkshake. Yeah. It's got water in the oil. It's no fun to change the oil. Because that has to come out of the wagon. Yeah, that may be a separate video. If so, thanks for watching. So to get the wood chipper out of the trailer, I have to undo a bolt there and a bolt there to get the chute off. But to get to the to get to the heads of the bolt, I have to reach in from the back. I don't think my arms are long enough to reach around all that way. So, let's see what happens. I'll bring you back when I've got the chute off. So it turns out that the chute pinches those bolts enough that uh, I can get them off. I can get the nuts off anyway. in and show you what I found. Uh, by the grace of God, I'll show you what I found. All right. All right. So here's what I found. Yeah, that side's got no nuts. And This side has no nuts. The engine is not bolted down to the frame. All the bolts have come out. Yeah. If I hadn't found the milkshake in the oil, I would not have checked those. By the grace of God. Everything comes from God. So. It may be overkill, but I'm using lock washers and thread locker because I don't want to have to pull that out motor out again or the uh, wood chipper out of that frame again out of the trailer. Yeah, I know you can't see, but trust me, I can't see either. 
And the last one. And of course it wants to be difficult. The axles in the road so I don't have good access. Not sure if there's going to be any thread locker left when I get these in. But makes me feel good. Now to tighten them down. That's one. Two. Can I get to the fourth one? Yep, that's four. I'm going to shorten up the, re the system and see if I can get them tight. Yeah, this may be why they fell off. There's just no good place to spin the ratchet in there up against the axle and the back of the housing at the back. That one's tight. I'm not doing the click noise. Oh, that is slippery. That one's tight. That one's tight. And that one's tight. Ah. Now that the engine's back on, we get to change the oil. Oil drain plug is down in there. Can you see it? It's right there. That means the oil's gonna run across here and underneath. I'm gonna take the tire off. I'll bring you back. So there's the oil that came out of it. Doesn't look bad at first blush, but when you move it around, the milkshake sure comes out. Yeah, that's got a lot of water in it. All right. All right, let's get the wheel back on. Spacer. Wheel. Washer. Cotter pin.
we go. Wheels back on. Let's put the drain plug back in. Not sure if you can see the wheel, the uh, drain plug going in. Got our oil proof pipe dope. And let's put it in. Of course, now the wrench is jammed on. There we go. Now it's time for oil. So the Briggs manual says this thing needs 0.6 liters or 21 ounces, I think it is, of 10W30. I have 300, we'll put another 300 in a minute. And there's another 300. Give that a few minutes to settle down and we'll come back and check it. That's had a bit of time to settle in. Let's see how we did. Yep, right full. Now to get it back in the box, in the trailer. You didn't want to see that anyway. At least that's what I told myself when I realized I hadn't pushed record. Anyway, so what's the plan moving forward? I don't have a plan, because plans go awry. Yeah, that could go wrong. Thank you. 